Detective, I now want to return to uh, to the interview and specific conversations about what Ms. Shabiznis told you on February 23rd of 2022. Um, first of all, can you start by describing you know, what her general demeanor was when you met with her on the 23rd? Well, characteristic as a calm demeanor, um, no outbursts, no um, mood swings. She was uh, quite frank in being able to answer questions and ask questions. Uh, what was your ability to communicate with her? Very good. She yeah. was uh, able to answer my questions and um, with no issues. You indicated that you had previous work as a narcotics investigator. Have you had an opportunity in the past to uh, meet with and interview suspects who are under the influence of drugs? Yes. Um, did you note any anything in Ms. Shabiznis's behavior, demeanor, or appearance that would have suggested that she was under the influence of narcotics at the time you were meeting with her on the 23rd? I did not. Can you describe, uh, going into that interview, how much information you had about the specific acts themselves? At this particular time, I had very little information. What I knew was um, that she has their, um, their head had been fallen in a bucket in the basement and also just the information that I had from talking to his mother about um, who he was last seen with and his last known whereabouts according to her. In terms of the specifics of what happened to Shad and where the rest of his body was, is that information that you knew prior to beginning the interview with Misha Business? No. The information about Shad and what happened to him and where his body was, where did that information come from? It's your business. Yeah, and uh, to begin your interview, uh, what did you, how did, how did you begin asking her about the specific events? I basically stated to her that I, you know, with the information that I had and the information that I had at that point in time was that Shad's head had been found in a bucket in the basement and that she had one point had been with Shad. So I just asked her um, if she could tell me what happened. And was she able to describe to you what happened? Yes. Um, what did she say with respect to uh, how Shad was killed? How Shad was killed? Correct. Uh, she said that um, Shad had produced a, a chain, like a dog collar, uh, and put it around his neck. Um, initially, it sounded like it, it might have been some sort of foreplay, but it got to the point that um, she started to um, strangle Mr. Therian and um, just continued to do so, um, according to her, for several minutes until he passed away. Did she, um, as it relates to the strangulation, did she make any statements about her observations of Shad as she was uh, choking him with that chain? Yes, she stated that his head turned purple, um, he started to I believe blood coming out of his mouth, um, his tongue was um, protruded, I believe. Did you ask her whether she chose to stop at that juncture? I did. And what was her response? Uh, she stated that uh, she wanted to continue to see what happened. And did you ask her whether or not Shad had uh, struggled at all when she was choking him? She said that he did. And what was her response to that? My understanding is that Shad had been um, laying on the bed prone face down and she was on top of him. Um, and so she was able to choke and, and control his body, so to speak, that even though he was struggling, she was able to still maintain control. Did you ask her about how she felt about what she had done? Yes. And uh, what were her responses? Objection relevance, yes, to elements, Your Honor. I think they're certainly relevant as to her intent. Overruled. Um, her response was that she liked it. Had she also at some point expressed some remorse or that she didn't necessarily want this to happen? Initially, that was some of her comments was that, you know, it had it intended, but once um, she started to um, strangle, Shad that uh, she found that she 
could enjoy it, and so she kept on uh, strangling him. Had she expressed anything to you about her use of drugs at the time of the offense or immediately prior to the time of the offense? She said that um, approximately two days prior to uh, the offense that she and Shad had been smoking methamphetamine. Two days prior to the offense or two days prior to the interview? I'm sorry, two days prior to the interview. Um, did she mention anything to you specifically about drugs or paraphernalia that might be found in the residence? Yeah, she stated that there should be a pipe and some methamphetamine in the basement on uh, a dresser or an entertainment center of some sort. Okay. Did she express any knowledge about the location of the chain or chains that were used to strangle Shad? Yeah, she stated that there was two chains. One would be um, the same um, location area as where the methamphetamine was used, and another would be in an, another table in the, in the basement. And now I think I asked this earlier, but you're in communication with the investigators who are on scene during the course of this interview. Is that correct? Correct. And uh, the information that Ms. Shabusiness is providing you about uh, where things are located and what they might see in the basement, is that being confirmed by investigators on scene? It is. And the information that she's providing you, is that accurate with what they're observing? Yes. Um, after the strangulation itself, what did Ms. Uh, Shabusiness tell you that she did with Shad? Well, initially, uh, we were aware of the, you know, Shad's head being in a bucket, but we were not aware of where the rest of his body had been located. So there were several questions pertaining um, to where his body was located. And Mr. Business' response to that, it was still in the basement. Uh, then she then later uh, went on to explain that she, in fact, had dismembered um, Chad's body and placed uh, the various body parts into um, several um, bags and or a tote down in the basement. Uh, was she able to describe in, in detail the things that she did to dismember Shad? Yes. And again, are you matching that back up with information from investigators at the scene? Correct. Um, was she able to actually describe the types of bags or types of containers where she's placing body parts? Yes. And again, is that consistent with what investigators are later finding on the scene? Yes. Did she talk to you about um, how she dismembered or what she used to dismember Shad's body? Yes, she stated that she used um, knives that she obtained from the kitchen of the residence. Did she, was she able to describe to you where those knives would be located in the basement? Yes, she described that the knives would be um, in the same um, package or the bags that um, the body parts were also located. And again, is that consistent with what investigators were finding on scene? Yes. In addition to the dismemberment, did Ms. Shabusiness discuss with you anything else that she did with Chad's body after she had killed him? Yes, she did. And what was that? Uh, she described um, how she had sexual contact um, with the body in terms of um, playing with his penis, also, she described that she had a dildo that she placed into um, Chad's mouth and to his anus, and that she uh, also um, had cuddled the body. Did she discuss performing oral sex on Chad? That's correct. Did she indicate about how long she had cuddled or played with Chad's body? Uh, she indicated that, um, you know, it was, I don't exactly recall how long of a period of time, but there was a period of time, um, I believe shortly before or and or after um, the start of dismemberment. Did she talk to you at all about um, trying to clean up the scene or uh, what she was doing with uh, the blood? during the course of the dismemberment? Yes. You know, I've been made aware of that there was not a significant portion of blood found in the basement um, that would have been consistent with dismemberment. So I asked her about that. And, 
my response was that she mainly used like the bucket and or the, the blue tote to capture um, a lot of the blood and eventually um, to dispose of some of that into the shower um, in the basement. She also did um, talk about um, you know, the dismemberment and um, the removal of body parts and the fact that she, there should still be um, a portion of Shad's lower limbs, like legs, in uh, the, the van that she had been operating. So she did describe how she uh, did remove um, at least a couple of his body parts um, during the course of dismemberment. And when I say move, I mean out of the residence itself. Okay. And did she um, specifically give you a, a reason for why she ultimately left the residence on that day? She um, told me that she had heard um, lots of uh, walking around upstairs, and she, she also heard that she had thought she had heard some um, shots being fired in the area. In, in this call, there's some concern, and um, she just decided that she had needed to leave at that point. Did she discuss uh, with you what her intention was with respect to Shad's head? One of the first things that she did say was that um, she did uh, like the head and that it was her intent to take the head as well as the genitalia that was in the bucket with her. Um, that's why she specifically placed those items in the bucket. Um, but she did mention that she had um, left the bucket by the stairs. Um, and uh, I don't know if she intentionally wanted to do that, but there was talk that it was her intent to um, take the head and the uh, genitalia with her also. Um, at some point in time, do you discuss with Ms. Shabusiness a specific timeline for the events leading up to that evening? Yes. And is she, what does she tell you about the timeline of her whereabouts leading up to this event? Uh, two days before uh, the 21st, that Monday, um, is when she was at uh, the apartment on Eastman Avenue with um, her friend AJ. They decided to go pick up Shad, which they um, did do. Um, they were turned back to the apartment. At one point, they also um, did visit um, Shad's father, Michael Therian, and, and, and then also again returned to um, the apartment at Eastman Avenue where they, they stayed there for a while. At one point, um, AJ um, left and then um, Shad and um, Taylor then returned to um, Shad's mother's residence on Stony Brook Lane. And uh, the information that she's providing you with respect to the timeline, is that information that also was consistent with the other aspects of your investigation? Correct. Had she mentioned to you while you're discussing the timeline um, use of narcotics or controlled substances? While they were in the apartment on Eastman Avenue, um, they did use um, her and Shad smoked methamphetamine, and she also indicated that Shad and AJ smoked the marijuana. Had she talked to you about um, what vehicle she was using to travel around to these locations? Yes, the entire time she was using um, her roommate, um, Mr. Dom's um, gold Chrysler minivan. Did you ask her whether uh, Mr. Toms had given her permission to use the vehicle? I don't know if I asked her specifically that question, no. But it, it was under impression that she was using it uh, at the time of the interview. I was not sure. I later found out that you know, Mr. Toms claimed that she has used it in the past, but that necessarily was supposed to use it that night. Did she uh, tell you any information about whether Mr. Tomes was involved in this crime at all? He was just at the apartment the entire time, um, sitting in a chair, basically. And according to her, he wasn't even aware of what they were doing because he was either behind him or in the bedroom. Okay. Um, when you were speaking with Ms. Shabusiness, did you ask her about whether or not anyone else had come down into the basement at any point in time? Yes. And what did she say? 
That's when she stated that she believed that Shed's mother had come down with a cat. Okay. And did she discuss actually having any interaction with Shed's mother at that time? She said that she did not, and I, I asked um, Taylor if she thought that um, the mother had seen her, and she stated that she did not believe. So I asked her what she did, and, she, and Taylor just stated basically that she, she kept quiet and was um, off in the, uh, like the finished part of the basement. So I, I want to draw your attention then to the second interview with Ms. Shabiznes uh, that occurred on February 28th, is that right? Correct. And that was also a recorded interview? Yes, it was. And you advised her of her Miranda rights prior to that interview? I did. And she waived those rights and agreed to answer questions? Yes, she did. Did you make observations of her demeanor generally on that day? I would classify it as being the same um, calm, was able to uh, answer questions um, appropriately, no um, outward signs of any uh, disruptions or, or mood swings. And uh, was she able to understand your your questions and answer them appropriately? She yes. actually calls for speculation, Your Honor. Overruled. Leading. Argument for leading. Pardon? Uh, argument for leading, alternative argument, Your Honor. Uh, overruled. Go ahead and ask another question, Mr. Lizay. Thank you. And what was generally the purpose of conducting that second interview with Mission Business? To conduct some um, follow-up questions concerning um, that we had that um, you know, came up during the course of uh, the investigation uh, concerning like her disposition of the body, what were intentions of the, what they're doing with the body, and her cleaning up after herself. And what did she say with respect to uh, the the purpose of dismemberment and then the, the cleanup. According to Ms. Business, the purpose was that um, she um, realized she needed to remove the body from the residence so that she wouldn't be caught. And um, she, you know, Shad was um, more that she could carry just in terms of um, being a whole body. So the dismemberment and putting them into bags was to. Uh, facilitate with her being able to remove the body from the residence. And did you discuss with her the attempts to clean up the residence as well? Yes, in, in Detective Scanlon had been um, an integral part of the search of the residence itself, so he asked her several questions about cleaning up because he had observed some um, you know, markings or, or on the uh, cement down area under, that had been underneath the bed as well as there was a squeegee in the um, shower down in the basement in some um, items such as Clorox, um, you know, wipes. And so he asked her about that, and she stated that, yes, she did use uh, the cleaning materials such as the Clorox wipes and the spray to um, clean up um, several of the areas of the, in the basement as well as using squeegee to clean up the shower area and um, subsequently placed these wipes in the same bags that the body parts was found, which again is consistent with what um, Detective Scanlon had found. And Detective, I think I asked you these questions already, but have you had an opportunity subsequent to the interviews to review the recorded interview from both the 23rd and the 28th of February? Correct. And, and you do believe that the recordings were accurate and consistent with your recollection of the interviews? They are. Uh, Your Honor, at this point, I intend to show significant portions of the first interview and a small, smaller portion of the second interview, but it's about an hour and 10 minutes in length for the first interview and about four minutes for the second, so I think now would be a good time to take a break.